And finally, to our special segment, Resurgent Africa. Amid the coups and the crises, there are many positive stories from Africa that often get overlooked, but not on this show. Our story today is from Kenya. The country is recovering from a deadly drought that has lasted for four years. Not just humans, but their cattle also bore the brunt, as nearly three million of them died of hunger and thirst. Now, with no additional source of income, women of Kenya's Maasai community have turned to fish farming, and a little push from the government is making their lives better. Our next report gets you more details. From 2020 to 2023, East Africa witnessed its worst drought in almost 40 years. The dry spell especially hit the arid and semi-arid regions of Kenya, affecting close to 3 million people. Families were left without food and water. At least 100,000 children suffered severe malnutrition and lack of sanitation exposed the population to numerous illnesses. Not just humans, but animals also took the brunt of the deadly disaster. The three years of below-average rainfall claimed the lives of 2.6 million cattle, which died of thirst and hunger. The scenes were horrifying, as one could see the decomposing carcasses of livestock everywhere. And households that relied on only rearing cattle were left with nothing. The four years of drought had snatched away everything, including their livelihoods. But since then, the people of Kenya have moved on from the misery. They are now turning to other sources of income, and one of them is fish farming. For the women of the Maasai tribe in Kenya's Kajiado, fish farming is proving to be a profitable profession. With training from the government, these farmers are now selling one fish for up to 300 shillings or over 2 US dollars. We are still livestock keepers, however, due to climate change, most of the time we experience drought, forcing us to relocate to other areas and our cattle still die. So when the county government introduced us to this fish farming project, we gladly received it because we considered it as an alternative source of livelihood. The Kajiado government supplies pond liners, Nile tilapia fish, and feed to indigenous people. And all they have to do is allocate a portion of their land to create a fish pond and harvest the batch of fish after six months. When drought came for four consecutive years, we were severely affected. Our cows died, our sheep died. We were left with nothing. Our cows died, the lands were left bare, with nothing for the cows to graze on. So, I decided to set aside a piece of land to rear fish and monitor how they would perform because I realized it's a good source of food. I can also take it to the market, sell, and educate my children with the proceeds. The initiative aims to help families in the Kajiado region by diversifying their income and providing a buffer against the climate crisis. The project is also encouraging fish consumption in the Maasai community to escape hunger and malnutrition. To address this issue of land scarcity, changes in, changes in livelihood systems due to climate change, uh, the program uh, has seen some importance to have uh, fish farming in the rural setups so that at least they have alternative livelihoods and have a diversification of food systems in order to address issues of food insecurity and malnutrition within the households. With climate change impacting the world in ways we cannot imagine, shocking scenes of emaciated cows and dead sheep could become more common. However, empowering remote communities like the one in Kenya can help fight back and provide a way to improve their lives. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree.
a News 18 Network initiative.